we need to have, to have some more feedback. We already have feedback now, like this is feedback. So you have feedback that you press the button. So that's good. We also want to have some feedback in screen with some alerts. We do have this notification thing that we can use. Maybe an alert here is better at the top. We use Tailwind UI and here we can have like a lot of components that we can take and put in our project. So we use now the notification for this thingy here. When you click a link, then it will save it to the clipboard using the navigator clipboard API. And this, these are alerts. So I think this is better it's on top of the page. We just put some code into the create form. So after the breadcrumbs, we want to uh, show an alert. So now we have this nice uh, alert. Order completed. Lauren Ipsum, dollar sit Ahmed. Dismiss. That's fine. I don't need these buttons. That's the great thing with Tailwind. Everything works pretty well by default. So like even these these things, and then you do it, it will be like this. It's awesome. Okay. Um. And I really recommend Tailwind UI. So if you want, if you're not a designer and you want something which you can quickly use during development without having to spend a lot of time styling things, and I think it's a steal for the price you get and for the quality you get. These alerts, I like them already. Hey, sorry. Okay. So we have this alert, but we only want to show it if a new activity is created successfully. So there's like this error message, which we will get if we do not have permission to add this up. So that's why it's in the try catch. So we probably should have this error message alert. And when this happens, there's no exception and we have a result. So we can probably also show the ID of this newly added document. That's a bit uh, of the downside of using Tailwind. You will get like these diffs and paths and it's difficult sometimes to see what you're doing. So this is the success alert. Then we show this and else if error alert, then show a show success alert because we also want to change the content. And then uh, we have the success alert. And we just uh, define it. Mm -hmm. We do not show it by default. I do want to have this on top. We probably don't want to change this and maybe we want to change this. I do want to have the content on top, a bit more on top than the rest. So now by default, it shouldn't show anything. Yeah, it's gone. So that's nice of fight, it's gone. I'll just copy this uh, error alert as well into the code. Error alert, we will show it. Let's just show it here. Like um, we will add a timer as well later. Let's just add it for true for now and then test it. Okay, so let's test it out. So we did a uh, form submit and now there's this alert on top. And yeah, maybe we should even scroll to the top because it's like a long form and then you don't see it. Let's try to do that as well. Scroll to the top when you press the button. Okay, let's just test the error as well. So let's log out and then permission denied. Refresh. So it gives up. And let's just, because this was true already. So let's put this to false. And same for this. And also, you can get both. And let's just do that one more time. To, now it's good. I know it. Wait a few seconds. Now it, let's do it the other way around as well. Log in again. Okay, so that works. Well, at least it works with uh, mock-up data because there might be a different error than the permission denied. Like if you make a mistake or the code or something else. So it will be nice to at least have the permission denied because that's a common one. And then if there's another one, then we do uh, just display the whole uh, error in the, or the type or something. But uh, for now, let's work on the success message when we have this data. Um, well, maybe we can at least store the result ID in result.id. And now should have this created ID probably for now. And then should be able to display this ID in the message in the console. Yeah, so we have this ID and that's the same as the ID that we have here. So it will be handy to know which one we did create. If you want to look, uh, it's also in the index object ID. So you can quickly use this ID to uh, what's going on and it's created everywhere. That will be handy to have in the message. So let's just add this here as well. So for the feedback, I will do it in Dutch. Tijd aangemaakt, created, and then what this? It's called created. This miss, that is uh, sluiten. And then if we press this button, then we will say um, close. It's the same for uh, the other button. Is there no button there? Uh oh. Why is that? Is it by design? No button to close the uh, permission denied. Yeah, that's fine. Let's punish the user for 
making stupid error by not logging in. So no permission uh, to, uh, <laughs> and then we can say something uh, like, uh, maybe you forgot to log in or something. To make this error message a bit uh, more useful, you, we can actually check if there is a user. But maybe, because we know you have to be logged into, maybe we can avoid this altogether by, by checking before we, no, no, I don't want to do this because let's say you log out. You, I, f I like that you can log in again or that you, we could just not show the whole form, but then you cannot work on it. And so I'll just say like, maybe you forgot to log in. This is the error, but this is the permission error. Just make another one for uh, the other cases because we probably want to have like one generic and then uh, mm -hmm. we need to check if it's a permission error or not. So let's do it later. We have now the ID and then we can close it and we have no permission. Okay, let's just test it out. So let's first do the success. Okay, I like it. Maybe this button could be here, but with this ID, you can easily copy it, close it. Nice, again, close it. Yeah, worked. And then log out, mm -hmm. create it. Let's put it there. Yeah, I do like these uh, feedback. I think it's okay to scroll manually because you probably will know how to do this. And if you see this, oh, I did forget something that that will work. It's close enough to the top, even on mobile, I think. Yeah, it's fine. We will not do an automatically scrolling feature because it will probably just confuse people more than, uh, oh, just to print this. Uh, I think the E is just this message that we get in the console also. So we have this error message. If you're not locked in, then uh, you will have this permission denied error. That's basically all we get from this A thingy, I think. Let's just see where it's... Yeah, we print this error adding document, and then this A. So it's Firebase error permission denied. But you can also get other errors. So there's no type or something we can work with. Just make, maybe print it normally. And then, okay, so it's... This could be handy, maybe in the future. Let's pull out it. Yeah, for this permission denied, we know what it is, so we can still print this in the console. But let's just check what's with. Normally, you would have like this type on the exception, but we don't have it now. It's just a string start. If this starts with permission denied, where is it? Here. Then we show this one, and else. Oh, let's set everything to false then and set it to true. Show a general error. Else we show this other. And then we say this uh, error message is E. Just need to create them at the top. Everything should be false by default. And this can be basically an empty string. So we will not get like weird errors there. False. And then we just copy this alert thing uh, went wrong. And then here we can print uh, E like this in brackets or spelled. So it's a bit difficult to test without. Oh well, we can say like E is. Uh... Now let's first test the, the permission denied error. Permission denied, it should still be permission denied. E starts with is not a function. It's not a string then. What is it? Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is, but exception. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not that familiar with JavaScript and try catch the general exception that you get. What's this for? Well, let's just see what the type of this thing is. Maybe we can Google it better. It's an object. But when we print it, it doesn't look like an object. It looks like a string. But somehow it's an object, okay? Let's just look at the Firebase uh, documentation. What is it? It extends an error. It has a code and a message. Okay, that's actually something I would expect. So this code will be handy as well, probably to display. Can we just say then code and message? What do we get? And then we can just, uh, instead of this uh, string, we do the code thing. And dun, dun, dun. test, test. Okay, so this is the code and this is the message. So we can just say if code is, uh, this is this permission denied code. So here we have also the code and the message then. So we can just use that. Maybe I just always set it. Then we can also use it in the uh, permission. So maybe we do want to set this message as well. I could 
that could be maybe something uh, some situations in the firestore rules where you don't have permission to create uh, the content and then it would be handy to maybe use this uh, message i also add code now the code is not that let's just add another p for this so e is not defined so what was it then again oh, error message error this is error object that's better because it's no longer just a message it's also the object error object maybe even firebase error object nah. we did find it quickly enough so let's also add it here and here we also add the uh, the code mm -mm -mm. object dot code now we will just test it out with a message because it okay. test test permission denied false for i like it permission denied okay let's instead of doing the permission denied now let's let's just change it to this always show the general error so now if we have the permission denied we get the other alert well, let's just test it up. there's something going wrong the code is permission denied and this is the message okay so we fixed the form for this uh, one we have this error message and we show it nicely in the form and we have like these three types of alerts i was saying like we don't have to uh, make components for this for the disabled thing because it's just basically this uh disabled and um it's clean but i think this is quite a bit of code to copy paste because it's all this html and it's um it's all the same if we want to change it at one point in time it's also we have to change that every spot so yeah i do want it on the edit form I, we will make a component out of this let's make this component and then include it and then use everywhere this component okay um so we have these alerts we'll move all this logic to this form as you can see we don't have any so we have these alert message and we can just uh, export them i think but maybe it's better just to ah, okay let's just export them for now <clears throat> so we have these uh, exported and now we can include this document just import so we can do import and then so we include this uh, document here and then what we can do just to only have the html and flexible then we can say bind and we can just bind all these objects and show success and it will be like a long list like bind uh this one and this one and this one and this one so maybe uh just do something like uh an object uh, alert object and then say the success is false and error is false then maybe the code error code yeah well, let's just make this alert message and then instead of setting this to true and false it's a bit of like if we create one more then we also have to set this to uh it will be a lot of uh, booleans then so let's just do it like this and then um here it is a success so we can say alert success is true and yeah, maybe even say like in a function like um, set alert or something set uh, default values because every time we change it we want to have the defaults uh, there and then um do this and we just can call this uh, function uh, to to set the alert correctly can probably do it like this set default alert values mm -hmm. so we do have to copy paste this code then everywhere but that's okay maybe let's make it a success message so now we set the id but then we can just say alert that success message is and then just we have to add the string as well that's okay to have this here and then not not in the other code thingy oh well, now we set the success to true and alert message to this message and then yeah we will have to rewrite the component error to true this can be then simple let's set alert um code is is this code and alert error message this is message that should be enough to do something with it I think message was the correct thing. We can uh, remove all this logic then. It's just clean. Now, instead of binding all these uh, variables, we can just bind alert uh, thing. And so it's a lot cleaner, I think. Then. And instead of all this information, we just have the alert. Now we can say if alert success, then show the success message. And instead of this, we show the alert success message. 
What's that consistent with this? Let's just quickly check. Show success. Oh, it's not a function. It's a function stuff. So alert success is false. That's it. And this is error. N alert error code. Is this, what is it? Permission denied. Oh, uh, we should be able to find all the codes. So where are these codes? Okay, permission denied. Oh, I think they could use some markup here as well. <laughs> where are the other ones? Deadline exceeded. Uh, we will figure out in time all the error codes probably. <laughs> but this should work. Um, and then we can create this custom message and then also include this general error message uh, variable. And if we didn't have a custom message for these, then we just uh, show the main uh, code, error code, and the uh, error message. And instead of doing this, we have to do this. Okay, let's try it again. Test, test, success. No, we did restart the server. We restarted even the Visual Studio code, IDA. Hey, I see the log now, so yeah, restart it and I see the hello world. Um, does it work now as well? Probably. Yeah, sign in. Let's test it out. Success. Ah, uh, 1S. I forgot 1S. So. Okay, I'm not sure if you saw it, but there was an undefined and then I changed it. If I change it now, then it should be undefined again. Yeah, see? And then I put the S there and save it and then... It, it works. Well, this is magic. It's great. The people that are not into web development, maybe you say like, this is normal. You change something and then it's, it is uh, working. And, but this is actually not how we worked for, uh, for a long time. We had to even wait a minute and then refresh the page and test it again. And then you would see the change. But now you just change some, something in the code, save it, and you see it immediately. It's all built on the same ASM builder logic. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, it's great. So we have this, uh, let's just implement it everywhere on all forms. So this is the edit form. We also have a similar try catch here. We just need to alert as well. Logic like this. So we still are copy pasting, but we are copy pasting in a different way. Copy pasting uh, only things we want to change in the want to have control over in the future. Uh, success message. I just assume the result is the same uh, object uh, which we get. So we should have the result there as well. And then do something with it. And then uh, also for the error message, we can just... Uh... You see, we do our copy pasting, but we are uh, also having a nice, uh, all the HTMLs in the component, we can control it a bit, we just bind the alert. I think it's clean. You can always refactor code. That's my philosophy a bit on copy pasting. If you're working in a film and you don't really like the structure, then you just refactor it. But for example, you have the data on top of, like if you don't refactor it, then uh, for example like this, I made a little mistake, but uh, forgetting the, well, let's just fix it everywhere. But yeah, if you use the file a lot, you will refactor it automatically. And if you don't use the file a lot, then it's probably okay to keep it as it is. I just was copy paste there. Okay. Oh, here it is also. Okay. So I have a few more minutes to test it out. So if we change the activity and then save it, we currently are an anonymous user. So we have no toestemming. Misschien ben je vergeten in te loggen. Maybe you should log in. Yes. If we do sign in, get this nice JVT token. Oh, yeah. So this is uh, something we have to do still. So we need to make like a success title or something instead of having this hard coded here. So then we can set it. For the edit form, we can say something like uh, changed. And then for the create, we can say create. And we do have to set the title here as well. Let's test it out. Just log out again. For the error, it works because we use this code. And so let's change it and then say no permission. And let's sign in again and then change it. Yeah, activiteit gewijzigd, it's edited. Okay, let's also check the goals real quick. Let's create a goal. 
first as anonymous user, it says no permission, and then do it as a administrator, moderator, and goal created. Let's check if this is correct. Yeah, so this one is created. Um, okay, now let's edit it as an anonymous user, and then we should get this permission denied. No. We forgot to copy paste one thing. So we have no permission, then we log in and then we do have permission. The goal is changed. I see the timer is not working, but it is changed. So what's happening here? I don't know. Uh, oh, cannot e a result ID. We do not have it. Okay. So for this one, we cannot show the success message. So maybe there's no result. I don't know. The update doc, maybe because we need to use this uh, reference. Uh, just quickly, because I have to go, but let's quickly try it out. If now we do have the correct ID because it's an edit. Yeah. Okay. So let's just also do it for the goal because it will have the same issue. So an update doc will not give you the updated uh, result. So we're learning Firebase here as well. Oh, this is the ref. Uh, sorry, call ref. Let's just check out the goal as well. We can edit it. Yeah, we do have the ID. Okay, uh, just to quickly recap for this stream, we did, yeah, we did add uh, feedback to the forum. So that was very nice. And every day the project is getting better. We did fix this. We still need to position the button to the right. Yeah, just thanks for being here and uh, thanks for, uh, for watching and hopefully uh, see you later. Thank you. Till next time, bye bye.